So despite my mini breakdown earlier, um, I had a bit of time out, um, I thought, you know what, I'm off work at the moment, so try, I've been trying to be productive since being off work, so not just doing nothing, um, although it's been very hard to do anything at the moment. So, despite my feelings of inadequacy, um, despite my limitations, my intellectual limitations, what did I? I can't even remember if I what I said earlier about this this article thing. So we'll start again. So, Michael, our Michael Fisher who is the, oh, oh gosh, it's back to front, is there a way to change that, is there a way to do that, how would you do that, I have been in contact with Michael R. Fisher, R. Michael Fisher, so I've been in contact with R. Michael Fisher, who is an academic type guy he's an academic and he I'm sure I mentioned this all did I mention this earlier so he our Michael Fisher and Desh Suba are academic philosopher types that are currently exploring the topic of fear they're putting fear at the heart of you know their research not in the typical way that we look at anxiety, but in its more holistic sense, in its more philosophical sense. And I have actually been in contact with the author of this book, which is The World's Fearlessness Teachings, for probably about a year on and off, just just through email. He started doing some YouTube videos as well. I mean, he's, a, he's, he's much smarter than me, much cleverer than me, much more intelligent. Their books are pretty intense but my point is is that our Michael Fisher who is who has begun an, an institute an organization a movement the fearlessness movement one of his real goals has been to try and promote the idea of fear studies being taken seriously um, he, he wants to I don't want to misrepresent his ideas. I'm really at the early stages of getting involved in the fearlessness project, fearlessness movement. I'm only involved informally at this moment in time. One of our Michael Fisher's goals, I think, and I don't mean to misrepresent him, is to get fear studies, fear research, scholarly fear stuff, to be taken seriously and promote fearology, um, fearism, which is the philosophy by Desh Shuba. So fearology by Michael Fisher and fearism, the philosophy by Desh Shuba. They want these to become far more popularised, acknowledged as a serious area of inquiry, academic inquiry, scholarly inquiry and one of the goals of our Michael Fisher was to try to create an academic journal that's that is centered on fear research studies and scholarly work because there isn't anything out there like that there's nothing you get lots of psychology journals scientific journals on all different areas and subjects but there isn't actually a journal specifically just for fear and the study of fear and all, all that entails and so Fisher has been wanting to create a journal based on this for a long time There's not a huge amount of people so far involved in the fearlessness movement. I think that's probably set to change. I've got in there quite early. I think I was the 50th member, but I think it's probably a lot more. And 
a lot of those members are actually doing scholarly academic work themselves i mean i haven't read any of their stuff but i'm sure it's going to be pretty in-depth and intense and so michael fisher our michael fisher i don't even know what the r stands for maybe he will tell me one day but he he's asked for people within the fearlessness movement to submit articles journals pieces of work scholarly research whatever it is he's asked for members to submit some writing uh, to potentially be part of the first ever fear-based academic journal which is pretty amazing really the trouble is is that i'm just not an academic the more you research things the more you realize you don't know and how limited you are and i've realized that recently but you know what i thought to myself okay it would be cool to be part of this to, to actually have something that you wrote submitted to a journal and published but i know that i'm not going to be able to do an academic piece not at this point i'd love to be able to research i would love to be able to spend lots of time researching but i'm notoriously slow i just it takes me a long time to read it takes me a long time to search for relevant literature and i it just takes me a long time to do anything so i've got to submit this if i want to be part of this i've got to submit it before january and with me feeling a hard feeling at the moment that's just probably not going to be possible so but i thought you know what after my meltdown earlier i thought this is an opportunity maybe all these things are happening for a reason i do still believe that possibly i hope i'm not horribly disappointed maybe i will be disappointed i'm i don't know but it's an opportunity and I've got to take it. I've got to write something. And even if it is just an, an opinion piece, because I, and I think this is important in academic circles and scholarly circles. I think it's really important to have the voice of the lay person, to have a voice of a person who perhaps doesn't get it all, who doesn't understand, who isn't the most intelligent. I think it's really important to include a population of the pe of the of pe population of of what am I saying? I think it's important to include a population of the people that perhaps don't understand. I don't. The thing I don't like about academia and scholarly, you know, sort of circles is that I think it's really exclusive. It, it 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 excludes a lot of the population of people and then is it any wonder that when you get pseudoscience and opinion and tribalism when you 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 are excluded because you you don't have the right level of intellect or maybe it's not even intellect sometimes it's about accessibility sometimes people are really smart in the world out there and they just don't have access so whatever it is that's that excludes you from these this, the academic circles. I just think that it's not a good thing, and I've I wrote a blog the other day, and I called and I talked about there being in any kind of nation an an intellectual underclass. I was, I'm just I'm sick of hearing people who've. Who, number one, are probably lucky to be who they are because they have natural ability. So there's some people out there who have natural ability and they won't need to do a lot. They just need to get up, go to school and they'll learn and then they'll have opportunity ahead of them for that reason. Then there are those that will have had opportunity because of their parents. So their parents were educated academic types who promoted a good education, gave them opportunity to go to university, all of these things. So I just hate the fact that there are people who are of a, a certain intellectual level and standard that can frown upon people who aren't, who lack that ability. 
But the point is, is that it's easy for those who are of an intellectual standing to condemn those without intellectual standing. And it annoys me. It annoys me because people don't choose to not be intellectual. That's a big debate. Choice. Free will. That's 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 a, that's another conversation. Something I'm interested in, but I'm not going to get into now. But and I'm digressing so much. I'm digressing so much today. I don't like that we can be we can exclude a lot of people in the world for no fault of their own. And I think, regardless of your intelligence, we should offer the opportunity to allow those with that lack a bit of intellect into those circles of academia. That's that's my point, isn't it? I don't think academia, politics, economics, democracy of any sort should be exclusive. I think everybody should have an opportunity to contribute. And so it brings me to my point, really. I sat there thinking, you know what? I'm not I'm not academic, I'm not intelligent, I'm not scholarly enough to really have a significant contribution to this new fear journal. But I'm going to try. I'm going to write something. I'm going to write something down because I do have a perspective. It may be an ignorant perspective, it may be foolish perspective, but you know what? There's a lot of people like me in the world who are not a genius, who are not high in this echelons of intellectualism I oh, see I talk so much shit I mean I don't even know what I'm talking about I'm just making up words I'm just putting loads of words together I bet I'm get, I bet I'll make those intellectual sorts really angry because I'm just trying to put in clever words together and I don't really know what they mean they're just I'm just trying to sound like I know what I mean this is when I'll get trolled this is this is when I'll get trolled for, for this kind of conversation but I'm just gonna write. I'm gonna. Ha- I'm gonna give. Maybe. Maybe it will be accepted as an opinion piece. But I do represent a certain group of people, people who, who are interested in trying to understand the world, interested in trying to make it better. And uh, maybe that does give me the right to have a say. Maybe it does give me some chance to have some input in an academic field so I wrote I wrote down well I've begun writing writing down my thoughts Um, and so we'll see where it goes we'll see where it goes because you know what I've got to lose at the minute nothing not much so yeah I just thought I'd probably just do a bit of a video just to kind of show the result of my little mini meltdown earlier, really. (sighs) Where were they? They were right there. Why have you got all my hats on, Darcy? Because I was trying to find your glove. That's why. That, that isn't really an explanation, but thank you anyway. And I was becoming you. Oh, I see. You're jumping in my shoes. Yeah, see? Look. I've got your hats on. And your drill. I've got your two headphones. Yes, um, yeah. Brilliant. So I became you.